Welcome to Behind the Event, a podcast that dives deep into the event industry. I'm Eric Westendorf, the founder of Event Render. The podcast is brought to you by Event Render. We help you run profitable virtual and live events through exceptional design. Be sure to check out our helpful event applications and design services at eventrender.com. Also, be sure to subscribe and like on whichever platform you use for podcasting, or if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and like there. And now we bring you Behind the Event. All right, so today on the podcast, we have um, an awesome interview coming up uh, with Matt Emerson, who you see to my left if you're watching the video, or maybe my right. Um, <laughs> but Matt Emerson is the president uh, of Sivco, which is a uh, production company uh, now out of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, correct? That's right, yeah. Um, right, and um, just moved there this year, correct? Yep. Okay, sorry, I'll ask you more about this in a, in a minute. Yeah. Um, but Sivco is a production company um, that uh, deals with uh, with productions of events. Um, they can tell you more about that in a minute of everything that they do. Um, and uh, so today we're, we have, uh, Matt on to talk about uh, a bunch of stuff that's going on with them, um, but the kind of overall topic of today is going to be about production, where event production is kind of gone, what's happening with it right now, uh, for anyone that's interested in uh, in production, whether it's a meeting planner or um, uh, someone that's actually in production, and just trying to understand and get a clear picture of what's happening, what can happen right now, what could happen in the future, and sort of get uh, one perspective and today that perspective comes from Matt. <laughs> so, uh, so just to start off, Matt, could you tell us kind of the story um, of, I guess, yourself first? Um, I know you've been in the industry for a long time, and uh, I believe it started out with your, your dad, correct? Um, right, yeah. And then, uh, and yeah, so, so maybe a little bit about your story and then, and then your company's story and, and how, how it all came to be and where it came to be where it is today. Sure, I think um, it's it's really hard for me to tell my my story about uh, my my journey in this industry without interweaving the company because um, because Sivco has really been the only place I've worked since graduating from university. Um, the company, my as as you mentioned, my dad did start the company in 1961. He was living in Rockford, Illinois. No, I'm sorry, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's from Rockford. He's living in Pittsburgh, selling cabinet hardware. The company he was working for uh, was acquired by a bigger company, and he saw his upward mobility blocked by that by that transaction. and And he had developed a passion for skiing when he went to the University of Wyoming, and uh, said, "I want to move to Colorado." So, packed up my family, which was my mom and my three sisters at the time moved to Colorado and bought a sole proprietor, one man band that had the RCA language lab line, uh, selling to selling to middle school, high schools and, and higher ed. And um, so this was the early, early 60s, 1961. Uh, the US was embroiled in the space race with the Soviet Union. It was a really good time to be selling teaching tools. So, so my dad expanded the company's offerings to include traditional AV product like slide projectors and overhead projectors, film strip projectors and the like. And um, that, you know, continued to grow the company. We became one of Sony's first pro video dealers in the country uh, because, because video was a great, was a great teaching tool. It also was a great training tool. And um, in, we expanded, or the company expanded to uh, carry Panasonic and JVC as well. And each of those manufacturers had a requirement that the company carry some demo equipment, which was demonstrated to clients very occasionally. Um, and so my dad, one day, looking at all the stuff in the warehouse, said, why, why don't we rent this out? And that was, that was the birth of our, of our rental department. So... Um, I joined the company in, in 1989 after graduating from the University of Colorado Boulder. I majored in entrepreneurship and small business management. I took more accounting and finance classes because I, I got it. And uh, what was good is that my dad really didn't have a finance or an accounting bone in his body. So there was a really nice way for me to enter the business. And, um, you know, so I've now been here. It will, it will, it was 31 years in May. And, um, uh, we seven years ago 
uh, divested the sales and systems integration and service departments so that we could just focus on the live event side. It was the part of our business that was growing. It was the part of the business that, that I was more passionate about. It was the part of the business that had the problems that I wanted to solve. And, uh, and so, um, that's, that's the story. So this, uh, Let's see, January of 2021 will be our, our uh, 60th anniversary. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations for, for cruising for that long. Um, and we'll get to some questions here in a bit about where that's going to go <laughs> the next few weeks. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So before we get into all that, um, is there anything uh, you know, that your company does uh, that someone from the outside uh, or the people in general kind of misunderstand about? about what you guys do exactly. Um. So I, when I'm talking to somebody who uh, is interested in, well, so Matt, what do you do? I'm like, well, I've, I've got a company that, that does audiovisual production. Well, what is that? Well, then I ask them about what was the last conference that they attended? You know, and, and typically somebody has been to, an, to, to a conference pretty recently, you know, within the last six months or year. And so and then I talk about, well, we're the guys who bring in the screens and the projectors and the cameras and the lights and the sound and all that. And I talk about, about AV or good AV, kind of like being like good hygiene, where it's only noticeable in its absence, right? Yeah. Um, you, you tend not to, you, you tend to only notice it when something goes wrong. 100%. Yep. And um, no so, one knows bad audio until they hear it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. And so, so that's, that's how I talk about, you know, the, the industry and, and, and what we do. Um, did it, did it, was that really the question though? I mean, what? I, yeah, no, I mean, pretty, pretty much I would say um, as far as, yeah, misunderstanding what you guys do um, because it, it can be confusing sometimes when, if you just say we do a, events, you know, like, yeah. What it, what is the the part? What what is your main part of um, of the events? And and uh, you guys do production, so that involves typically all the, the AV components, the the um, equipment, and everything. Um, do you guys do anything aside from that that has a large part to it, like strategy or anything like that? No, we tend we 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 do some creative services mm -hmm. for our clients. Uh, might be pre-production of a, of a video that's that's shown at the conference or it might be producing content from the conference um set decor design um and um uh, and then graphics we, we help our clients with graphics gotcha. um we we tend to work uh we work a lot with associations and with corporations and with a lot of those associations um uh that's where they can really use some help. They're not going to work with a, with a, with a high end, you know, corporate producer because they don't have the budget, but they still have the desire for their content to look good. And that's where we can help. hundred uh, percent. So, yeah, so I was going to ask you too, um, uh, along with, you know, where you've been and, and the story of your company, um, not only that just things are changing, but uh, uh, sort of in your, um, in your, future outlook, uh, was your, was your company kind of on a steady path or were you, were you looking to go anywhere? Like, are, uh, is your company looking to, to change anything? Uh, how do you see your, the future of your company? So, so pre COVID we were, we were on a really nice roll. Um, we were having really pretty decent growth of, of 20% a year for the last couple of years, 2019 was our best year ever. And in the, in, in the Jim Collins uh, language, our flywheel was really spinning and uh, felt like we were gaining momentum and attracting really good people to the team, attracting uh, really good client base growing. Um, it was fantastic. Um, and, and, you know, my goal for the business was never to say, oh, I want to have a, I want to, I want to have an office in Chicago next or Dallas next or anywhere else. It mm -hmm. was, it was, I want to work with a team of people who I really care about, who are really passionate about what they do. 
and I want to serve a client that appreciates the value that we can, a clientele that appreciates the value that we can bring. And, um, and you know, we're not, a, we're not the best fit for everybody out there, um, but we're a good fit for a lot of folks. And it was just, let's find more people who, who uh, really value what we can bring to the table. Um, and we were, 2019 was a lot of fun. Um, I could say a hundred percent. I feel you there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's, that's, that's awesome to hear. Um, you know, I think, uh, it's a good thing that you focus on, uh, on what you have, uh, and, and not try to explode quickly and, and go to, to possibly places that you, that don't make sense and, and whatnot. So that's awesome to hear. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll move into some production questions, which is more apt to what's happening right now. So the first question would be, are you guys doing any live events? And if so, what the heck does that look like? <laughs> um, I think since, since early March, mm -hmm. we've had, We've had one two day event out of the shop. It was an outdoor event. It was in a tent. It was socially distanced. It was, I think, 25 people uh, each day. Um, we've uh, done a, a corporate town hall that was basically a streaming event uh, where we took gear to their office and, and a crew to their office. You know, probably on one hand, I could count the number of times we've been out of the building. Uh, wow since then um is it uh yeah is it do you see anything picking up or actually probably declining more as far as that goes it was it was really interesting when when it hit things dropped off to, you know like 85 percent of our business in march canceled in about a five-day period right and then and then april and may and june and july and august all of those events started to started to fall it was it was kind of like, a, I tell people, it's been like watching a multi-car pile up in super slow motion. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and then, you know, it was like, all right, well, we're going to see how this, how this virus behaves in the summer. Yep. And, uh, and what we're seeing is it's, as long as people are getting together, it's not, it's not, it's not going away. Yeah. Right. And so then we've started to see fall events fall off. And I think right now, We've got two events still booked for the fall. Um, what, could I ask you real quick what, with these fall events, do you have precautions and, and anything in place? I'm just wondering more a, a little bit about what you've talked to with your clients about how, how it's going to go and what it, what it kind of looks like. What we're... Um, Obviously some social distancing. distancing. Yeah, I mean, but a, a lot of that is, a lot of that is on the client and on the venue and they're not turning to us for that. What they're, what they're turning to us for and what we've worked on is what's going to be our protocol to keep, to keep our, our team safe and to keep, and to keep the client safe. So that involves, of course, masks. It involves mm -hmm. distancing positions um, on the crew. It, it involves, you know, sanitation protocol of those, of those high touch items. Um, and, you know, un unfortunately it's not a problem that we've been having to solve because we just haven't been out. The first event, you know, that we have, um, in a venue, I think is at the end of October. And then the next one is sometime in November. And, and right now the client says there a go. And I hope that that, that that happens. Um, are you? Are you looking to stream it as well? Since like, I'm guessing they're not going to be able to have as many people there. Right. We'll and, definitely stream it. Okay. Now, are you doing anything production wise that might be different than what you normally do? Or is it aside from the streaming, I guess? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Fairly standard situation. Yeah. Yep. Just adding some streaming components in there and going with that. To my knowledge, there might be some conversations that my production team's having with the client that I'm not aware of. Mm -hmm. um, as far as any of the events go that you have had, um, actually, I'll put this on both platforms, so live events or virtual events. What, what, what have you seen as being your most successful 
situation yet so far where whether it's been you know one specific project that has been really successful uh, with it or is it overall just like we're still trying to figure it out <laughs> there, you asked about successes right so i won't tell you about the things that didn't quite go uh, as planned. that was going to be one of the questions <laughs> um everyone wants to know about the failures <laughs> There, uh, we're we're learning every day, right? And 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 at a, at a at a more rapid clip than I can really ever remember in this in this business. Um, so one of the successes that we've had, and and I think almost everybody in our industry has done it, is is we built out a studio in our warehouse. Right. We had the space. We had all the gear. We had the team of people. And, and that studio was gaining a, a significant amount of traction. I think um, the, the, the event that stands out in my mind is a client hired a producer who hired another AB production company in another state who hired us because the keynote was, happens to live in Colorado. Oh, and, and, and this guy is a, is a, is a famous, uh, famous author uh, and, and he came in and I had the opportunity to, to chat with him a little bit. And he said, God, you know, this is, this is great. This setup is so good because I've done some stuff from my conference room, but right now I know that you guys are going to focus on the technology. You're going to make me sound good. You're going to make me look good. And I can just focus on my message. Yep. And that, whether it's, that's what we're looking to achieve anywhere. We, you know, in, in, super in, high production quality. Yeah, you know, making sure that the, that the presenter doesn't look like they're from home. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and so and and it's also you're worrying of, you're worrying about the technology, right? Um, we did a we did a very small event for for a associate for a Colorado association where we basically managed their Zoom meeting, but they had some staff in their office. We brought cameras, microphones, uh, computers. Uh, I think we did some some program switch for, but we didn't manage that, and we managed the Zoom. And they said this was perfect because we we can focus on our business meeting. It was an annual meeting for an association. We can focus on that, and you guys focused on the technical part. And that's what we do in a in a ballroom, right? Our clients hire us to help them deliver their message and to make them look good and sound good. Right. A hundred percent. Um, actually it's kind of going off of that. Um, I don't know that you need to go too in depth with this, but I think it is interesting to know, um, what, what, what sort of elements have you seen with your, with your production studio that you guys have created that really make an impact with making it better on a pre presenter presentation and overall, I mean, I know I saw that, you know, you have, um, uh, sort of uh, uh, confidence monitors in a way that would would allow the, the presenter to, to sort of see who else is on there along with the uh, video of whoever they're talking to in, in the yep. camera, right? Um, yep. Um, so I think the things that, that really enhance that experience are it's going to be the lighting, right? It's going to be really good audio. Um, and uh, multi-camera switch so that it's a different so that we can vary the look um it's a very it's a very professional setting um there aren't going to be dogs or cats that uh enter enter the shot uh unscripted um we do have a variety of downstage monitors and the teleprompter so that and those are tools that not every that not every client uses in in a in a ballroom and and um, i mean personally i just think it that that if I was giving a presentation, I think that would be great, great to have. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I, I don't know if you saw the video that we that we posted. I, I think it's on our website, and but we also posted it to LinkedIn where I'm talking about a town hall that I held for our company, and I did it from the studio, mm -hmm. and it made it made such a difference. Yeah. It made. Uh, and the, here's the other interesting thing, Eric, is that I think when somebody comes into that studio there is a little high, it, it elevates their energy level because it is kind of like being on stage where are the lights, there are the cameras. And 
they're, they're standing instead of sitting and it's just a different environment that I think helps them up their game. Sure. Yeah. You're probably going to force maybe the rehearsal a little bit more if they don't do it or <laughs> get them more comfortable with, with their presentation like you would in, yeah. a, in a live event as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we do spend some time with the presenter talking about, all right, what content do you want to have on these, on these downstage monitors? Mm -hmm. Do you want your notes view? Do you want next view? Do you, you know, or, you know, we can bring up everybody who's on that call if it's a small enough, if it's a small enough group. Right. So we spend some time talking about that. And, 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 and it's also different to talk to a presenter and get them to focus on the camera instead of focusing on the audience, right? Because there is no audience. So that's a different, it, it's, um, yeah, your, your eyes have to stay locked into one place the whole time, which could be yeah. a little, almost like you have to double force yourself to, to stay that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, all right, so we're going to have to switch to, I, I won't go into the failures, let's say, but like, let's talk about a little bit of um, the uh, um, sort of bottlenecks with within virtual events. Uh, so I think we all know already, obviously, all the issues with uh, live events that are happening right now. And so we talked a little bit about, you know, what you can do to, to sort of social distance and stuff like that. Um, and production wise, what's changing a little bit. But with the virtual events, is there anything that you've noticed that have been a, that has been a little bit hard to overcome? I mean, personally, with some of the stuff that we're doing a little bit to a degree, uh, the technology obviously has a huge part to do with it. Um, the one main thing uh, for us in some circumstances is just uh, internet bandwidth um, when, when we're streaming something. Um, is there any bottlenecks that you, or hurdles that you would say are, is kind of the, the biggest problem with the virtual event that you come across? There are, there, are a, there are a number of them. The first thing that comes to mind is a different scope of work conversation than we're used to. Okay. In, in, in some respects, it's the same, such as, all right, well, you know, tell me about your event. Well, we have three keynotes. We're going to have eight concurrent sessions over three days. Um, we've got sponsors. We've got exhibitors, yada, yada. Right? That's, that's kind of the same that we would have if it were, a, if it were an in-person live event. But then, it's, but then it's talking about the platform and how people are going to access that content. How, uh, who's handling registration? Is it the client system? Is it our system? How do they talk to each other? Uh, how is content gated? Um, how, are, uh, how are attendees credentialed? Um, it's uh, um, how, many, how, many, how many people might be hitting the site? Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's... Um, Who's editing the content? Who's uploading the content? It's getting the graphics that the client wants to see on the site and then getting them in a way that they want to see it, formatting. We have, we have, in some respects, we're now a software company. <laughs> yeah. Right? I feel the same to a degree, yeah, right? Yep. And, and, and that's pretty, that can be pretty scary. Yeah, it's a totally different way to think about it all. Um, relying heavily on the internet, right? Uh, and web, a website or uh, a, a, a couple of different hosting uh, services and all that sort of stuff. Um, you're really relying a lot more on that sort of thing, um, which kind of changes it all. Way different than a live setting, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so basically in the end, there's just a lot more, a lot more pieces to think about with, uh, sort of yeah, the online aspect of it all and how, I mean, I've gotten a, a million questions as well um, and sort of feedback about what a, a lot of people going through the best sort of uh, ideas and ways to, 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 to get people to meet still, you know, cause you're not in a live setting. So um, I think that's a whole nother conversation we don't need to get into right now. <laughs> um, but it's a, yeah, it's an in-depth thing, right? Because you're trying to have a meeting and people want to meet yet. Uh, it's a lot different on the internet. Um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to ask you real quick. Um, 
given that you guys have uh, sort of a, a green screen and virtual background uh, uh, sort of studio setup, right? Um, uh, I was kind of wondering, and I've actually um, had some questions about this, about um, like budget friendly things and, and how can you make, or what are the options where you can have uh, the difference, I guess, between something that would that would be more of a virtual background versus a, a green screen setup? Uh, like, what what are the options that you guys and that you've seen and that you know of uh, as far as making things be a little bit more budget friendly? And uh, and then I'm sure that you can get kind of crazy with uh, with making things really high end that could be more expensive as well. So we we don't own an, we don't own uh, any LED tiles, all right, okay. right now. So our the 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 backdrop of our studio is a rear projection screen with a 20,000 lumen laser projector on it. So with that, we can make it a green screen or we can put whatever, whatever still or motion graphic that a client might want to have. Um, I would say that's more budget friendly than, than, uh, right. than an LED wall. Um, yeah. But, you know, it could also just be, just be pipe and drape. Um, you know, there are ways that, you know, I think we can probably have upwards of seven positions or, or more in that studio, or we can do it with as few as, as two. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the camera can be locked down. Um, we don't need somebody monitoring audio once it gets set up, if it's pretty simple, and then it's, it's, it's running that stream. Right. Um, so, so overall, the less, the less you have overall, the, the, the less expensive it would be. Like if you don't right. need multi-camera and, um, mm -hmm that sort of thing. Is there anything, is there any other elements that you could say uh, could potentially make it more budget friendly? I guess the only thing I'm wondering is for people that might want to do like a green screen setup in their office, let's say, as opposed to going to a studio, um, you know, what, what are the kind of the trade-offs, I guess, that are most obvious that you might be able to? You know, it's, it's, we, 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 uh, we have done that or we can do that. And it's a simple little production camera, a little lighting kit. Right. So the, yeah. the least expensive thing would be coming yeah. to them, setting it all up uh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then your a little bit more expensive route would be to, for them to come into your studio where you have all, all, a lot more options, obviously. Um, right. But, but both, both are possible. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got and, it. And, and, you know, when, once, once you get into the studio, you can add, you can layer on some things that, that will obviously add to the cost, but, but also increase the fit and finish of that event. Sure. That makes, makes sense. Um, let's see here. I think, um, I think we'll go into some quick questions here to kind of wrap things up just about the future of things, future of the industry sort of questions. Um, we're still, we're still kind of talking about production uh, and, and where that lies, um, but feel free to say anything you will uh, or you, you've been thinking about with, with, within the whole industry and meetings in general. Because this whole time has definitely gotten people, I think, thinking a lot more about um, uh, what other things are possible uh, when it comes to a larger view of just having meetings and, uh, you know, what, what, the, what the effectiveness is there. Um, and all that. So, um, I guess the first question would be, um, summer of 2021 next year, what do you, what do you think it's going to look like? <laughs> uh, I'm so, so, um, so in, in, in this, uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that there's a vaccine. And then yeah. by that time, that vaccine is, is getting pretty widely distributed. And, and I think that's critical for people being comfortable getting together again. Yep. Um, so, so I think that in basically a year from now, it's starting to come back. And I think that the fall of 2021 could be very busy. Um, I think that there will be, um, there will be a hybrid component to about every, every event. There will be some, you know, there'll be more streaming of those. Um, but I am a, 
I'm a huge proponent, uh, heavy, uh, and a heavy user personally of conferences. I like, I like conferences. And it's like live, live conferences. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because now we have virtual conferences. So you have to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, and there's, you know, the, I, I go to our, I go to Infocom. Right. Um, and I don't go to Infocom really to look at gear. I go because of the people whom I see. Yeah. And you have, well, I, I think, what, sorry, I had to interrupt. I just have this feeling of like, you go into a conference and one, you can have a little bit of a deeper conversation than you might. But it's also the presence of being being in the presence of um, uh, whether it's gear that you're looking at for a, a, but then you know seeing that gear and then having a conversation about it rather than if you're just having a meeting online, it's a little bit different. And a lot of you know, so I'm, I've I've been active in industry associations for a long time, and um, and and you know I think that a lot of our clients would say that our attendees, you know, yeah, they come for the content, they like the content. But a lot of the value takes place in the networking that happens outside of the sessions, right? That happens at the coffee breaks, at the meals. It's the it's the uh, the chance encounter of, of, of Matt and Eric running into each other and not seeing each other for six months and having a conversation that might lead to a new opportunity. Or it's that shared knowledge. It's it, it, that part is super hard. To, replay, to, to replace or to simulate virtually. And, and um, you know, for years now, you could get all kinds of content online. And that's going to continue to be the case. But people still like to get together. Yep. Um, when, when, when churches can open safely, people are going to go back to church yep. because of the community. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you'll ever replace that. I don't think that's possible uh, um, unless for some reason we have to for indefinitely, which would, would be terrible, <laughs> but yeah, I'll just try not to think that that's going to happen. Um, so, so I, I was going to kind of ask a few questions. I think you kind of alluded to some of the stuff. I don't know if you want to expand on it. Um, but basically I was going to ask you, uh, you know, what ab about the future because things have changed, is there one thing or a couple things that you're most excited about? I mean, kind of alluded to some of that. Um, and then on the opposite end, is there, is there something that you're, um, you know, more concerned about with the future? I think that could allude to your, <laughs> your concerns with not being able to meet in person. But, uh, but as far as anything that you might be excited about that, that this new sort of landscape has, has opened up in a way or anything like that? I, I think for the for the events industry, I'm, I am excited about about people getting together again and about and about that business resuming and and, and I think it will I think it will come back strong. I also think it won't come back exactly the same. I think there's going to be some real challenges. I I almost think that it's easier to do that. The hybrid is the hardest one to do, mm -hmm. right? Because in a in a virtual environment, there are things that you can do to make sure everybody is having the same experience. But in a hybrid environment, the live experience is going to be different from the online experience. And I think it's really hard to bring the outside people into that room in a way that is that is meaningful. Um, and and um, I'm I the things that excite me are outside of the. Are, are outside of the industry. I, you know, there, I, I get together now every week with three to five friends uh, on on Zoom, and we weren't doing that before this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm having more face to face meetings with people probably than I was because everybody's getting really comfortable with this with this technology. Um, I'm going to spend less time in my car. I'm <laughs> I'm certain of it, uh, and and I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I probably will spend less time on a plane, but I, I still enjoy enjoy travel, and and I really think there is, it, um, I'm excited to share meals with people again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember one of the first times I uh, went to uh, uh, 
a family get together after having see, been haven't had seen seen anyone for months and it was just insane how 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 i felt like i was missing something there so much because <laughs> i work from yeah. home for the most part anyways and uh, i don't uh I don't uh, have a ton of contact, but but just the general small things. I think everyone knows this already. Uh, you know, you go out, you see people, even just uh, to a local coffee shop or something like that when you can't do it. Um, definitely feels like there's something missing. <laughs> so, yeah. I, 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 so something else occurred to me that I think uh, is a is a benefit that will that will come out of this, and and I think that there are some some non for profit. Um, organizations out there, um, charitable organizations that are realizing that through a virtual event, they can actually increase their fundraising um, because their their costs are lower. They can have an audience that is outside of their local market and they can also keep content up for a longer period of time. That event itself can have a longer life. And, and I think that for what, what people have had to do to make that attractive in a virtual environment is work harder on the content to make that, to make that content uh, compelling. And, and I hope that that then translates into the live environment will, where people will be more interested in that. And it's, it's really been, it, it's shaken up a lot, of, uh, a lot of traditional thinking. And I'm excited to see what, what comes out of that. Yeah. Definitely. That was one thing actually that I was wondering about or was going to, to ask you ask you earlier, um, but I thought we'd kind of pass over it. Uh, with what, what what openings do we have for nonprofits, education, and sort of fundraising industries, which is kind of what you just mentioned. Um, it sort of opens some doors for industries that might not have, uh, you know, be able to take advantage of uh, of, uh, you know, really expensive hotel conferences and stuff like that, that they, yeah. that they might otherwise have to do. Um, I think so. So I think we're going to wrap it up. I just have one last question for you, Matt. Um, and that is like with everything that's going on um, and even in, you know, your life before COVID <laughs> uh, with you and your company, how, is there anything that you could say that, uh, that, that, you would do or your company would do to kind of stay on top of, of technology and, and continue learning and growing. Um, I think it's something that everyone is constantly trying to do myself included um, to always try to stay on top of things. And, you know, uh, everyone has their own um, daily routines or whatever it is, or, you know, reads their own specific types of articles and stuff like that. Um, and it's hard to keep on top of everything because there's so many things going on. <laughs> Um, so is there anything small, anything uh, you have that you, that you might want to share that you, uh, that you guys typically do or, or you do? I'm, I'm uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm really active in some industry associations and connected right. to a lot of people in the industry. And, and I've been learning a lot from those conversations about how people are approaching the virtual environment, how they're, um, utilizing their studios, how they're having conversations with clients. Um, there is a lot of just running a business in this environment that I'm learning. Uh, you know, they're, um, payroll, the PPP loans, right? That's a whole new beast that took a lot of took a lot of time to learn. This is this has not been boring, like one single day for me. Um, yeah. It, it's framing, reframing conversations with clients. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's learning how to write a, a different scope of work um, in, a, in, a, in an environment that has a much slipperier slope than, oh, you want to add another room or you want to add a rehearsal or we're going to add delay screens or whatever. I mean, those are, those, <laughs> those are really easy to control what was in the original scope of work and, and, and what wasn't. Well, when you're designing a, a web portal for a virtual event, how many revisions do people get? How many times can you change out the graphic? How many different looks are you gonna are you gonna give them? Um, yeah, you know, there's there. So we're we're just learning a, a, 
I'm learning a tremendous amount. The team's learning a tremendous amount. Um, it's every day yep. it is a is a learning experience, and we're and you know we're 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 talking to each other, and we're talking to our colleagues in the industry. We're we're taking training sessions online. We're learning platforms. We're learning um, virtual uh, switching tools like uh, VMix and OBS. Um, you know, we're learning. We're 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 going to have a lot of the team just brush up on basic editing so that we can we can trim recordings for clients and make them tighter. Sure. Um, yeah, there is. Um, there's a lot. One of the things that one of the things that my team did when when this thing started to unfold is we're like, all right, um, I want you to focus on this. You know, I want you to focus on what the state's saying. I want you to focus on the national news. I want you to focus on um, on industry um, industry associations and what and what they're saying and. And so, because it was too much for one person to manage. Sure. So that's, you almost, that's create, you almost mm-hmm. create like a, a central brain <laughs> with, yeah. uh, with, with all of the uh, resources that you have in a way, um, which makes a ton of sense. Utilize as much as you have, right? And, 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 and we, we changed, uh, as an executive, we cha- uh, executive team, we changed our meeting rhythm. Instead of meeting once a week, we're now meeting twice a week and, and, and I think we're spending less time in meetings, even though we're meeting more frequently, but things are changing so rapidly. Yeah. Uh, it, we thought it was a way for us to, to um, be more productive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just in the day-to-day, you're almost learning, or I've been learning uh, a new, possibly technology, or a new thing that might work for something, or it doesn't work for something. So all those little things add up. Uh, and like you said, if you're constantly talking to your team about all these little things, um, that's one of the best ways, I guess, to grow at this point <laughs> and to keep moving forward. So. Yeah, and it's and it's it's a challenge now um, because we're not having the serendipitous encounters at the water cooler or the one you know the lunchroom or back in the warehouse and 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 um, so trying to create that uh, collaborative environment is a little harder. We it, just because you have the, you know, we're not having chance encounters on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Right? They're all very intentional. Yeah, yeah. If you come up with an idea, spur of the moment, you can't go and knock on your coworker's door. <laughs> they might be busy at home or or just not available to talk. Um, I guess in a certain situation. Um, yeah. So, anyways, thanks a ton for. Uh, for talking today, Matt. I really appreciate it. Um, got to learn definitely a, a little bit more about what's going on with uh, with production, you know, what what can happen, what has happened, and what we can possibly look forward to in the future and how to kind of tackle some of these things. So that's definitely helpful and I uh, really appreciate it. So, it's a pleasure. Thanks a ton and uh, yeah, take care. Thanks for watching or listening today. If you uh, would like to hear any more or watch any more in the future, just go ahead and subscribe. um, Whichever uh, podcasting platform you listen to or uh, or watch, Uh, we post on YouTube as well as many other um, podcasting platforms. And uh, if you have any questions for us, just go ahead and go over to eventrider.com and you can send us a message through our website there. Thanks and take care.